Now, if you want to be like all the other squares out there on the internet, you could use this stuff, or you could use this stuff, or you could make your own. So the basic formula for black powder is 75 parts potassium nitrate, 15 parts charcoal, and 10 parts sulfur. And for the most part, that's pretty much how I make mine. Uh, I did experiment with adding an extra gram of sulfur in a 100 gram batch, so it would be 75, 15, 11. And it seemed to burn a little faster, but for the most part, it's pretty much all the same. So the things you're gonna need to do this are some kind of ball mill, some lead media, some containers, and the obvious ingredients, potassium nitrate, charcoal, and sulfur. So the first step I do is I measure out 75 grams of potassium nitrate and I put it in my magic bullet wannabe and I grind it up till it's a very super fine powder because right out of the bag it comes out like table salt. And this step is unnecessary, it just cuts down on the amount of ball mill time. So then you measure out 75 grams of potassium nitrate and 15 grams of charcoal and 10 grams of sulfur and you throw it in your ball mill and you let it run for several, several hours. I have not been able to make fast black powder in under eight hours of ball milling. Um, and in a lot of cases, I find that the longer it goes, the faster it goes. Um, there, It does reach a point where it's not going to get any faster. But, you know, that takes anywhere from eight to 12 hours. Now, the speed of your powder will depend on a few things. The quality of your products, the purity of your sulfur, um, and what kind of charcoal you're using is big. Um, I made my powder out of mixed hardwood charcoal, and I could only get it so fast. And it wasn't until I started making my own charcoal out of pine or willow or even grapevine um, when you really start getting a good result. But the mixed hardwood charcoal does function and function pretty well. So one of the easiest ways I know of to tell when it's done or not is when you open it up and it still looks like that, it's not quite done. And of course you could always check it like this. Need more time. When you open it up and it looks like this, with all those balls on the top and all of the powder settled down there in the bottom, that's when you know it's done. So when it's done, all of the powder will be down at the bottom and it will be compressed into really hard clumps. And so we just run it through this kitchen strainer here and that fluffs it back up into a super fine powder. And uh, then we move on to the next stage. So the next step is to granulate the powder. So the way I do this is I take all of the powder and I have a spray bottle with isopropyl alcohol and I spray it down and I knead it into a big black powder meatball. And then I take that meatball and I kind of grate it over this kitchen strainer onto a cookie sheet covered with aluminum foil. And then we set it out in the sun for a little while and let it dry. And it dries pretty fast uh, on a sunny day. That, heat, that uh, heat from the sun and the tin foil really bakes it and dries it out really well. Well, after it's dried thoroughly, uh, you need to find a way to store it. And the way I like to do it is I use these uh, paint mixing cups with lids. And I uh, 
just take these old pill bottles and drill a bunch of holes in them and I fill them with desiccant balls. And I've found that works really well. So now you have real, honest to goodness, black powder and you could use it for all kinds of things. But seeing as how black powder firearms are my bag, that's what I use it for. I've used it in my flintlocks, I've used it in my cap and ball guns, I've used it for black powder cartridges, 45 Colt, 45 70, 38 Special, 38 Short, and Long Colt. Um, I've even made up a couple of weird 45 ACP black powder rounds. Um, but the point is, it works fantastic. Now, there is one small catch, and that is no matter what I do, everything I've tried thus far, I cannot make my powder as strong as the commercial brands such as GoX or Swiss or DuPont. But the good news is, is it's not a big deal to work around this. Um, basically, the short version is uh, you need to up your powder charge with homemade powder by about 20%. And you'll have the same power and the same velocity as you would with GoX or Swiss. So if you're using a 100 grain charge of GoX, you need to use a 120 grain charge of homemade powder. Um, so not that big of a deal. So um, some of the common questions that I get about this topic are, uh, one is, do you use Dextrin? Uh, the short story is no, I don't use Dextrin. Uh, the first couple batches I used some Dextrin and it made the fouling... I don't know, four or five times worse. Uh, so bad to where I can only get two shots off of one of my flintlocks before the touch hole would be completely clogged. And I'd have to use a nipple prick to clear it. And I quit using Dextrin and the fouling problem went away entirely. Well, you know, for black powder that is. Uh, so second is how, how is the fouling? Um, overall, it's right on par with GoX. It's not as good as Swiss. Everybody knows that Swiss is a lot better in that department. Uh, but it's, it's no better or worse than GoX. And uh, the third is, uh, you know, why don't you just buy GoX or Swiss like a normal person? <laughs> so uh, the answer to that is uh, black powder is very hard to obtain in my particular part of the country. Um, no gun shop carries it. Uh, you got to order it. It's expensive. You got to pay hazmat fees, you know, and all that stuff. And, you know, I just put up with that for a lot of years and that's just how I dealt with it. Um, but, you know, there's no federal or state law in my part of the country that uh, prohibits me from making it. And so I make it and uh, it's very, very cost effective. Um, you know, you could buy the stuff, you know, from Skylighter or one of those places that sells pyrotechnic stuff. Um, and you could make eight or 10 pounds of powder for under a hundred dollars. And that pretty much cuts your powder cost in half, uh, or better because, you know, even if you can buy GoX for $20, you still got to pay to ship it. Or, well, I, I do anyway. Um, you got to pay tax, you got to pay to ship it, you got to pay the hazmat fee and so on and so forth. So it's, um, it's very economical for me to make my own powder and, um, it works really, really well. It, it, it works in all of my firearms, muzzle loaders, cartridges, cap and ball guns, you name it, it works bitchin'. So uh, the firework aspect, do you use it for fireworks? No, uh, fireworks are illegal in my particular part of the country. Um, I don't make it for that. Uh, I've seen a lot of videos, um, you know, a couple years ago when I started this whole thing of making my own powder. All the videos I saw were pretty much, you know, guys making it for pyrotechnic use. Um, so I, you know, I, I don't know if my stuff would work for that. Uh, I would imagine it does. It's pretty much the same minus the dextrin. And there are guys that make their stuff for pyrotechnics and don't use dextrin. Uh, how do you feel about pyrodex? Uh, apparently there's a, there's like a really snobby attitude that people can have with black powder stuff against Pyrodex, they're just prejudiced against Pyrodex. Uh, Pyrodex has its purpose and its place. Uh, in my opinion, if you are gonna use it in a cap and ball gun, anything that has a cap ignition, muzzle loader, whatever, as long as it uses a cap, 
Uh, Pyrodex works swell. It, it works fine. I used Pyrodex for a lot of years. Uh, when I bought my first cap and ball gun in 2001, uh, all I could obtain in around here was Pyrodex. And that's what I used and, and it worked fine. Um, in my opinion, the biggest downfall with Pyrodex is uh, the fouling is horrible. It, it's hard as a rock, no matter how much lube you can use on your bullet or your patch or over your cylinder or whatever. It's hard to clean, um, but you know, if it's a black powder gun, whether it's black powder or Pyrodex, you're gonna clean it anyway, so. Uh, so I, I don't dislike Pyrodex, it has its purpose again. Uh, if there's anybody out there that has ever tried using Pyrodex in a flintlock, you would probably be disappointed. I know I was. Uh, when I bought my first flintlock, which was a, I think it's a Lyman deer stalker or a Traditions deer stalker. I'll put a picture of it. Um, all I had was Pyrodex. And I remember I was really excited and I went up to the ranch and I pulled the trigger on that thing and shh, boom, and it went off. And it just has this terrible, terrible delay between when the pan is going off and the main charge goes off. Uh, Pyrodex flashes very slow, and I'll show you. On the left, we have Pyrodex. On the right, we have GoX 3F. And then here, we have our homemade powder. So. And I know a lot of people have this thing with flintlocks where they think even if you use real black powder, they don't know the difference. You know, they'll say, well, you know, yeah, it just, it just goes off so slow. You know, I mean, you pull the trigger and the thing comes down and it's fizzing and then boom, it'll go off. I mean, you know, the time between when the hammer falls and the, char the charge goes off, I mean, you could, you could put your gun down and walk inside and watch an episode of Friends before that thing will go off. Well, it's not quite that bad. <laughs> But it almost is if you use Pyrodex. I mean, it's really, really bad. So if there's anybody out there that has a flintlock and all you have is Pyrodex, get a hold of some real, real black powder, and it will be a it'll be a game changer. It'll change everything. So Pyrodex has its place, um, but if it's a flintlock pistol, whatever, if, if it is a flintlock, you have got to use real, honest-to-goodness black powder. Another thing I've heard about is the, uh, the CIA method. People ask me, do you use the CIA method to make your powder? Uh, no. Uh, as far as I understand it, the CIA method is where you take your potassium nitrate and you put it in some water and you heat it up on the stove until it's dissolved and then you add your charcoal and your sulfur to that and it makes like this black tar looking mixture. Then you take either acetone or denatured alcohol or isopropyl alcohol and I've seen it done with those three items at separate times. Um, and you take a, a particular amount of that and you put it in the freezer until it's cold, cold. And then you take your black tar mixture of uh, wet powder, wet, wet powder, that sounds stupid, uh, powder, wet black powder mixture, whatever, and you dump it in the freezing cold acetone. And I think as far as I understand it is that chemically compresses it. Um, then you pour it through some cheesecloth and some other stuff. You could look up videos on it. Uh, I haven't tried that. Um, maybe that would solve my, um, my problem of my powder being a little weaker than the commercial powders. I don't know how the commercial outfits make their powders. Maybe that's how they do it. My powder being about 20% weaker really doesn't bother me. Uh, you know, just add 20% more by volume and you get the same punch as you do with the commercial stuff. So I think that pretty much sums it up. Um, if anybody has any more questions, uh, you know, feel free to, you know, ask me in the comments or whatever. And uh, I suppose I could beg you to like and subscribe and hit the notification button and all of that other cheesy shit. Um, or not. Whatever. <laughs> I don't make any money off of YouTube. It doesn't make, it makes no difference to me. Um, all I can say is I hope that there's somebody out there that found this uh, educational and helpful. 
Um, if there's anybody out there thinking of trying the same, give it a try. It works pretty bitchin'. Until then, keep your powder dry.